Hello, YouTubers. This is another session where my dear friend Sam and I continue to uh, explore and try to solve for uh, modernizing uh, OData with a new approach that's called OData Neo. Uh, in the past session, we talked a little bit about serialization and how we can kind of get a, a particular uh, uh, OData query and turn it into a link expression. Um, Sam, what, hap what happened to your uh, video? I don't know. It's frozen. Can you see my? <laughs> no, you completely froze. Let me remove you and add you again. Hold on. <laughs> nope, still Ooh. frozen. What? What's wrong? What happened? <laughs> All right. While while you're doing this, I'll uh, I'm just opening up the uh, the. How about uh, now? How about now? Let's see. Yeah, I can see you now. You're perfectly fine. Okay. It's a bit too, uh... Okay. Say something. Say anything. Yeah. Can you, can you see me? Yeah, the voice is, is choppy. Like, it's starting to break out a little bit. I don't know why. Oh, I forgot. Like, like, the camera is working, but the voice now is... Can you, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you, but it's cutting out. Ch try to change the mic, the microphone. I'll I'll tell you what. Try to join and rejoin. Maybe that'll that'll fix it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's Sam. Say something. Hi. Yeah, much better now. Okay. okay. Clearer, better. I don't know. Maybe StreamYard is having a little bit of uh, server issues, you know, and we yeah, yes. to reset the instance completely. Anyway, it's good to see you, brother. As usual, it's it's a sunny, nice Wednesday morning here in Washington State. So let's let's make it a fun time. So you know, just just for people that are not necessarily with us in the Discord community, there is a, a standard Discord community where we basically work on all these projects together, and. Um, uh, one of the things that we talked about earlier is to basically take in an, an array of tokens and basically literally just, you know, uh, as as one linear, one direction uh, or one dimension pipeline, convert these tokens into, you know, whatever else we want it to be. And I think Paul, Paul Wardy kind of brought up that point as well. He basically said, why don't you just take these tokens, you know, and kind of convert them into you know, straight into, you know, the query that you want. A while back, Sam, you know, I wrote a small library called Restful Link. And what Restful Link was doing, let me show you here what it was doing. Restful Link basically would go and say, Restful Link, right? It's basically sending link expressions over the wire, right? So if you look at the services, it's a very simple library, but, but, but it's huge. It's doing something really huge. What it's doing, my friend, is that it's using C-sharp script run async, right? And then whatever query you're passing in, it will apply it in a string stringified C-sharp expression, right? And then it runs the code, right? Somehow, I think what we're doing, if we're picking up these O data or O tokens, why can't we just convert them straight into a link expression using that run async and then spit out the expression from the other side? What do you think about that? Let me let me let me try to be a little bit clearer, Sam, because I want to see how you feel about that. This is a different approach than the classic approach that you already have for OData. Mm -hmm. So check this out. So imagine this, Sam. Imagine that you have, you know, this this is the root is the root o token right this is the o token node and inside that o token you have children right and inside the children you have a list of or an array of tokens like this and these tokens are basically uh, uh, some of them are like oh you know my value is you know uh, select and then you have, you know, a, a nested one under this one. So this one has like children. 
right and this one has just bear with me sam and then it has like a value like name like this right so this is the o token this is what's coming from that orchestration service right and of course each one of those has a type right so the type here is basically saying my type is you know uh i don't know this is a, we we call this an operator you know or yeah operator and then in here we basically said the type on this one would be a property property like that can you the eco sign as a oh yeah yeah you're right you're right same sorry okay. yeah start with you yeah you're 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 yeah <laughs> so, okay so this so this is that right now if we use the c sharp run async which has very little uh footprint in terms of compilation we can basically build a converter that will go and say give me this and let me convert it into something that looks like this something that looks like you know it or student whatever uh i i'll do it like you did it and then something like it.name and we won't even need to worry about that container object that's coming from the other side because you stringified this and you passed it into that c sharp script run async and you give back the value. Isn't that a simpler approach? That was the original idea, if you remember. That, that was how we were thinking about this. What can you see as a problem to that approach or as a challenge to that approach? I haven't uh, tried that uh, solution. Mm -hmm. um, if it, it can work, mm. I think it's easier than the uh, existing expression uh, method. Wait. It would be it would be much easier, right? Yeah. Let Let's uh, try. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I haven't tested that. I haven't tried that. We'll do uh, it now. You and I. Yeah. Let's do now and make sure it can work. Um, yes. for the in-memory date and uh, for the uh iQueryable. Right. Uh, and and I'll let me let me just start. Here's Visual Studio. Let me just kind of share this because this is the approach that I used originally in RESTful Link. And then Paul talked about it yesterday and I was like, yeah, that was actually the direction that we wanted to take originally. Let's just create this console app and I'm going to type in OXT uh, link UC. Just a, just a quick kind of, kind of project. So here's that. And then I'm gonna go take. I'm gonna go bring this entire statement, right? So the entire, uh, uh, you know, statement that we want to make. There's there's still some tricks to it, but here's our statement here. It basically uses in a bunch of libraries like C sharp. Uh, uh, what was the libraries that we needed? Hang on. We need we need something called Microsoft Code Analysis C sharp scripting, right? So let me pull these libraries real quick, Sam. While we're at it. And this might give us kind of a headway of where we're supposed to move forward. So here's the, that this as my startup project and then go to uh, editing, edit project solution. Here you go, disable this nonsense. I wish they just let me disable this by default. It's really annoying. We don't like it. We are the community and we don't like it. Okay, and now I can just kind of pull all of these things in here c sharp script run async yeah that should be that should be grand and then this guy is just looking for you know some uh, some input parameters so i'm just going to say lint query you know and this can be literally anything we can you know we can basically go and say select um, i don't know uh, x x dot name or something like that if that makes it a little happy and then there's script options and globals uh, what did i do with these give me a second um uh, script options and globals <laughs> script options is we already instantiated but the globals one is the one that uh let's see if i left a kind of demo or something like that in here just for people to to take a look 
client, restful link, client. There's also a client on the other side that kind of converts all of this together. Um, let me go back to my GitHub here real quick. To just find, so here we go. Restful link. This is restful link. And then where is, where is the source code that I actually wrote? Let's see here. Um, all the way. Yeah, it's been a long time ago when I did that. Yeah, restful link. That was about a year ago. And let's see if I saved the code. The library, NuGet package. Okay, fine. So where did I get these globals from? <laughs> yeah, this is the client. Yeah, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember where I put the client from. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, so it's pub public globals from iGlobals. And then I enumerable T data source. That's what it was. Okay, fine. Let's do that. And I don't think you need that immediately in, like, I think that was an optional parameter or something, if I remember properly. Yeah, it was an optional parameter. All of this is optional parameter. Okay. Now, why is this guy complaining? Because this guy is async task, right? So that guy is here. Yeah, there you go. And then there's no return type, you know, we just need the return value, right? So this is a value. So state, state, dot return value like this, right? So somehow we need to tell it what the data source is, right? In order for it to work. So we, we do actually need these globals, right? But you can also pass in parameters like, you know, in the script options, you can go here and say, I want to pass in some parameters to this library, which is, uh, let's see, script options, link data source. Yeah, let me let me do this. Here's a public globals of T I globals. It's very weird. It's like a, it's like a, it's like it's like we're writing in uh, in in in, uh, in in TypeScript or something. It's a very weird um, kind of reference. And I, I don't know, honestly, like I tried to look online on GitHub to see who's who's actually using this, like like who's using this kind of thing. AI, it, just like it, this, it was like quite editing. interesting. So, OK, so anyway, let, let's let me just get this iGlobals real quick. I package Microsoft reporting services C sharp script core. I think that's the one find an install version. At the one, and I think I need this one too. I globals of T, something like that. From the class. Class, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, and then this guy will have. So this globals basically is is identifying what what the parameters that we want to pass in are basically. Just trying to find out, like, what did I pull in in the video? This is why it's nice to record these things because I'll never remember. You know what I mean? I'll never ever remember. <laughs> is that from Restful Link? Did I actually got this from Restful Link? Let's see. Globals T and then I Globals. I know you can't see it. Uh, let's see. Oh, it is from Restful Link. So I went and defined my own thing. Ha! Interesting. Okay. Let's see. So restful link. Oh, it has four. It's, it has it has four hundred downloads. Who are all these people downloading these things? So okay. So let's take away CS scripting from here. And I think that's a model that I defined myself. Ah, that's what this is. Okay, good, good. And then uh, we basically went and said I need to define this data source, right? And this data source is basically, you know that variable that you're passing in that you want to sit in right so this will become in a prop actually if i just do control implement interface it'll just do it for me right so that's a getter and a setter like that here's a getter and here's a setter should be golden right now we need to kind of pass this guy the globals guy so all you need to go here and say new uh, globals new globals right of some list i'm gonna say student in here sam right so this is that 
and then inside that globals i'm going to go and say the data source is a list of students so basically var students equal new list of students we'll create a student class and new student so here's sam and here is hassan right and then if you pass in you know these students in as the data source in here Sam, are you mad at me or something is everything okay? Yes. Okay. As long as you're you're good, then I'm good. Okay. Okay. So this is public, and then I'm gonna go here and say string name pop uh, integer age like that, and then I'm gonna go back to my program and I'm gonna go and say give me the name that's Sam Shoot, and then age twenty five, and then name Hassan. On Habib, then age 125. Okay, and then we pass that in. So let's see. So if it if that's actually working, my dear friend, then the end result shall be um, that we are able to print out whatever the names are out of this whole thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say value, print it out. I'm gonna put a breakpoint. I'm gonna run the application. Yes, Sam. And we'll see. Is this going to work? Is it going to blow up? We'll see. Huh. Doing a lot of work. A lot of churning. There it is. And then if you look at the values, look. All that work that you and I did, it just did it just like that. Just like no, all I you can't can see, see it. You can't see it. Yes, yes. <laughs> look, all that. Look. It's working. The exact same thing that you and I were doing. Except that this is much more flexible because we were playing with strings. And we can make them strongly typed strings, right? So now the only trick that we need to do is to take an O token array and turn it into this statement, string to string. What, what, so, so two things for you. Number one, we're stepping away from strong types and that can be very dangerous, right? We're playing with strings here, right? Who knows? How does this thing work? Like at, a point, at one point in time, if the .NET team starts and decides to change how they, they represent a link expression in some new version of the language, the approach with the expression will last. This approach will fail, will fail bad. Yeah, uh, the, the question is, um, so far we tested the in memory date mm -hmm. for the dead source. Mm -hmm. Uh, here you have i enumerable of t. Mm -hmm. So how about i equalable of t? Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, dead is uh, maybe any database, maybe Soko Soro, any other things. Like this? Yeah. So, um, uh, tell me. What did I define this as? It's just called i i globals that passes in i enumerable. That's really dumb. Okay, mm -hmm. let me do that. So forget about this completely. This was just to restrict people. So you want it to be i queryable. Okay, and this oh. I, I can put this as queryable, and I think you want to produce the expression from the other side. Isn't that what you're trying to do? Like you're not actually looking for the result. You're looking for the expression, the actual expression, right? Mm -hmm. okay and that's fair we need to be spitting out the expression from the other side so sam if this was my thing how do i turn this into an expression how do i get the expression out of a an i queryable in in c sharp like like imagine this if you have let me tell you this let's say you have you know an, a new list here's i queryable of string Right, and this is my strings, and it's a new list of strings that has Sam and it has Hassan as queryable. So now I have this guy. How do I get the expression out of this guy? So if I go and say my strings, oh, I can just say expression. Is that what it is? Is it just as simple as that? Yes. Okay. 
So what does come from the other side, though? Just a whole bunch of things. Okay, we can do that. We can go and say return data source instead of dot to list, right? I can go and say uh, link query. So this is the query dot to list. Where's the dot though? Oh, this is this is all dot. Yeah, but I'm having the qu the the query here. Oh, it's it's gonna be after that. Okay, so I don't need the list anymore. I just want um, this is in case if it's it's empty, right? So the query is actually here, and then I want to go and say dot expression. Mm -hmm. Expression, right? So let's see if that works, Sam. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. Easy peasy Japanesey. Here you go. Here's your expression. Raw view. Isn't that much easier, brother? There it is. Do you see it? Huh. And here's your arguments, name. What the uh, top level not to type is a call? Uh, the type at the top level is method call expression. Method call expression two. It means it called the select. Yeah. Well, we did call the select, right? Is that good or bad? So if I take that expression and I hand it out to entity framework, it will be able to apply it on the data source, right? Look. So what's the second? So mm. yeah, the sec let's, let's, let's watch. Look. Yeah, I I want to make this bigger though. I don't know how to. Let me increase the screen size, Sam. I'm sorry. One sec. Uh, it's okay. Are, are you able to see it? I just like this one. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to Sam. So so this is the arguments. Yeah. Right. Um, huh. yeah so. So, 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 so the arguments. So let's see. The arguments are. Let's see, my dear friend. It's this guy is a link expression. That's on the argument side. It's a it's a collection of link expression, and each one of them is a constant and a unit unit uh, unray unray, something like that. That's the okay. work that you do by hand. It's doing it automatically. Yeah. What's the second? Yeah, the second one. Which is that? You mean the method? So second one is a unit expression. Yeah, unit expression. You don't even have to think about that anymore because it's already doing that magic for you outside of the box, right? Yeah. Let's um, add uh, mm. two properties in the select. Okay. In let's the return, uh, a numeral type. So new, like a, like a, like a, like this, right? Yes. Yeah, this will work. Look, much easier, my dear brother. Let's see. And here is the value. Here is quick watch. Here you go. Arguments, name and age. So uh, return a numeral type. Yeah, the number. Uh, the type is. No, 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 the type is in the second one. The second one? Mm. So argu arguments, the second one. This Open, one? Yeah. Expand it. Okay. Anonymous type. Do you see it? Yeah, the type is anonymous type. Yep. What do you think? Is this a good solution? It looks good. It looks <laughs> great. And... Uh, um. It's easy. It's easy to understand too, right? Um, like, like if if we. So here's the thing. Let me just tell you the pros and cons. Hmm. The solution with the expression is strongly typed. It's a lot more precise. But it's but it's also a lot of work. Like it seems to be like, if something is like way too smart. In terms of the code, it becomes harder to maintain as well, right? It becomes very hard to maintain. We need to be building systems that are easy to maintain. So if we can just give people a dictionary that basically says, here's how we pick up this expression and map it into a link expression, 
you know, it, it might be a lot easier to build that format. And you're still kind of giving people the results they want. I mean, I'm hoping at some point in time, like, you know, by the way, just us using it this way, we can also go use the entity framework to use that exact same expression to produce SQL, like raw SQL from that same library. Mm -hmm. I, I can see possibilities here, Sam. I can see a lot of possibilities. Me too. <laughs> so so here's here's what we should do next time. You and I on Friday, we should pair. And we should start doing that mapping into we're basically producing out of the O tokens. So let me just br bring uh, bring um, O data Neo here real quick. I think you I think you will like this a lot because my man, this is like this is it. Like this is the end game, right? We can do this. So. Um, Let's see here. You know, the thing about you is that you're core systems engineering guy. So you're building it natively from the ground up. Like if there is no C sharp runtime, we're screwed. We're, we're stuck, right? You would go and say, oh, I want to build it with expressions. Rightfully so. I, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Here's what we want to do, my dear friend. The, the tokenization orchestration service now can produce something called uh it produces something called no not projected tokens all the way up uh, an, an o token and this o token is what we need to take and convert it to whatever we want it to be an expression sql graphql whatever the case may be right so we will follow that exact same pattern sam it seems like this library could just be a simple kind of dictionary mapper between two different types and it will make it a lot easier for people the one thing I don't know though, is that I haven't used that C sharp runtime a lot. I haven't used that library. Have you used that library ever before? No. Anyway. Yeah. So it's it's an unknown, right? It's a stranger. I did build RESTful link with it, I have to be honest. But so you, you know you did the RESTful link a year ago. <laughs> a year ago, just a year ago. Oh. So it's a long time ago, right? Long time ago. Right? So it doesn't count. Right. But I also have to say, like, it's not like consistent, persistent. Oh, let me look at it. Let me see all the little things in it. Let me put it in a production environment and see what comes from the other side. None of that happened. None of it. Right. So we're going to have to kind of, you know, be tread very carefully and see how we're going to do this. So here's the thing again. This library here is magic to me because you're passing it raw C sharp string and it's running it right some long time ago back in 2010 maybe 2009 you know i wrote a project called quasi programming language which basically takes natural language like you would go and say something like this define a variable x that will be a number and it will take that and then convert it into int x like this and then pass it to something like this a long time ago like almost 10 years ago more than 10 years ago right it's crazy that we're going back in in one circle like this but here we are right um how about you and i read a little bit about this library before friday just to make sure that we know what we're doing with yeah this. um uh, uh. Yeah, uh, besides read, uh, to read the code, maybe spend some time to play the library. Yes, yeah, me too. I'll do the same thing, right? What I did with this library, just so you understand, I went and said, okay, instead of, instead of doing all of these things, why don't I just go watch this? In, in, the, in the Postman itself, watch this. In Postman, I basically went and said, pass in the look at look i'm passing link expression as an input parameter mm. but what's the problem with that sam anyone could destroy my app you could inject c sharp code in there like you could literally put an infinite for loop in there and then your app is down you're basically got ddosed right so that's mm. not gonna work right that's not gonna work but I also built a client side of it. Like, look at the client side. 
The client side basically goes and does this, watch. To list async. So this to list async will take that query and send it to the API. Which is basically what we want to do with transcendence, right? But but we still want to adhere to a global protocol. So Java could talk to C sharp, to JavaScript, and all that. We can't tell people in Java go write a link expression. That doesn't work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but if we but but if we tell them write O data protocol, they'll be like, yeah, of course we will do that. Especially these SAP folks, you know the SAP folks, you know they you know they they support O data heavily. I don't think SAP is written in .NET. I don't know what language it's written in, but I don't think for the most part it's written in .NET. So, so two things, Sam. Friday we start writing some some unit tests, right? We're gonna start mm -hmm. writing some unit tests, and then until Friday comes in, let's do some research on this library because I I also don't know it too much. You know, we need to kind of see what there could be something hiding in the bushes we don't know right yeah <laughs> all maybe right my... it'll be a treasure maybe maybe we'll find a treasure right and then this this can be something like to be honest with you we're going in circle like instead of actually building the expression in c sharp we're basically building an expression in c sharp but in a string stringified way right so it's pretty much the same thing it's just a lot easier and a lot simpler to understand i think sam so okay my dear friend so that let, let that be the plan and then friday we're going to start writing some failing tests and stuff like that cool cool do you have any last remarks any questions or anything no all right my dear friend and you know for the people watching us this is our approach this is where we're headed now it's going to expedite our process extremely because we'll be able to go and say here's an end-to-end -end odata like Sam, we could probably release like a beta by September first for just the select. Just okay, the select. Let's keep that as a goal. Let's keep that as a goal. So just the select will release a beta. Oh data neo. Do you know how to publish on Microsoft Nougat.org? Do you know how to do that? You do that all the time. I know you do. I just don't know how to create a new project under it. So you want uh, to publish it to market? Yeah, I want to yeah we're gonna put it in nuget as a beta release it's gonna be odata.neo and it, we're gonna publish it under microsoft you know for for the for the release oh, we might yeah. we might need to submit a a review yeah, we or... almost uh finish the work so i mm -hmm. can kick off, kick off the release process can we release an alpha an alpha release just for the select okay yeah okay I appreciate I appreciate your help on this. You know you're a good friend, right? And, and I still need to give you the book. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thank you so. Share, share your book. Share your book again. I yeah I need. I, I you know. yeah, yeah Sam needs Sam needs a copy of the standard. You know because he's <laughs> he's my good friend and I'm gonna sign it to him. You know I'm gonna sign it to you so you can have it. This is a good memory. I mean this version is already out of date because the standard keeps getting upgraded all the time. You know. Uh, and and you saw, you know, a test driven development, all that kind kind of good stuff. You know, like Mike Tyson says, it doesn't make sense to hurt the penguins. Penguins don't hurt anyone. You know what? I mean? <laughs> so, so anyway, this is this is your copy. I have your copy right here. We'll see you in the in the Microsoft campus. And thank you so much for joining yeah. in today. And of course, for people watching us, you know, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or compliments for Mr. Sam Suit. You know, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.